I gave you guys one task, and only two out of our 21 subscribers came back with an answer for me. I asked you guys to give me a book to review, and out of 21 of you, 21 out of the 21 subscribers, only two of you guys, only two of you gave me ideas. Danielle suggested I read Hardball by Chris Matthews. I'm not too excited about that one. Um, I started reading it. I hate Chris Matthews, so we'll see how that goes. I'm going to push through. Uh, Lola, I'm guessing that's your name because that's your screen name. Lola, you told me to read A Little Princess or whatever. Um, okay, I ordered it. It's on the way. I'm getting it for free because that's how I roll. Today... I'm going to be talking about a book that's a little controversial. I'm going to look for to some of you guys for your opinions on this book as well. Um, if you guys get the chance, get it. I'm not saying it's a great book. I'm not saying it's a bad book. It's an okay book. It's got great ideas. I agree with them for the most part. Um, but I don't agree with the way they go about a lot of what they say. They can be kind of condescending if you're the people they're talking about. If it was rated between 0 and 5, I'd give it maybe a 3.5 because of the parts where it's kind of condescending. It's about the Da Vinci Code. I love the Da Vinci Code movie. I, I saw it, I've seen it like four times. I, I love the movie, all right? Very entertaining. The book I've started to read, I'm not a huge fiction fan, so it's hard for me to read a lot of fiction. Um, so, I, I couldn't make it through that. That's why I watched the movie. Uh, my wife did read it. She loves the book. Um, at least, I think she loved it. I know she liked it. I don't know if she loved it. But anyway, the great. Dan Brown is a good author. I, I think he's a good author. The book I'm reviewing is by James L. Garlow and Peter Jones. The book is... Uh, the Hidden Agenda Unveiled, Cracking the Da Vinci's Code. It goes through just about every idea that Dan Brown has in the Da Vinci Code and basically debunks it. Um, once again, the way they go about it, I don't agree with. Um, they talk a lot about Gnostics and how Gnostics are not right. Um, while I'm going to choose my wording carefully here because I don't want to offend anyone, I'm not a Gnostic. I'm a Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ was God incarnate. Um, I believe that the Bible is 100% accurate. Um, I don't believe in any extra books of the Bible, uh, the Apocrypha or the any Gnostic writings or anything like that. Um, I've read through them. I consider myself well educated on them. Um, and I'm tending to disagree with them on a lot of points that these guys make. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say that I recommend this book only if you're really interested in the subject, okay? If you're not, I don't think that you need to read the book. Um, if you're confused about a lot of ideas in the Da Vinci Code, there's a lot of other resources you can go to, like me. Ask me a question and I could probably answer you. Or ask a Gnostic and see what they say. You know, get both sides. Get both sides. That's what I always say. If you're going to research religion, philosophy, anything, get both sides. If you don't get both sides, you're not getting any side. I'll mention one thing right away that Dan Brown mentions consistently through his book the idea of the Holy Grail. Um, he makes it seem as though Christians have this huge idea that there's this Holy Grail that caught the blood of Christ and, you know, it. to be completely blunt, there's no freaking Holy Grail. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about a Holy Grail. Nowhere. No writing ever, except for writings in 
long after the death of Christ that somebody thought, hey, it'd be a good idea to talk about. I don't believe in a holy grail. I don't know a single Christian who does. The only Christians who do are who get their Christianity from Indiana Jones. One of the things it talks about in here, from my understanding, um, from what I've read in the past, and they also confirmed it, whatever, I, I'm not 100% sure. But what Gnostics believe is that Jesus Christ was not divine. Um, the only way he was divine was in the sense that we're divine, that um, as a Christian or whatever, we are all a Christ, um, me meaning that you know we are all divine in our own way. So th what they believe is that Christ was no more divine than us. So I'm going to read this just to kind of sum it up a little better. Um, this is talking about the early Gnostics. Uh, it might have changed since this, so if you're a Gnostic out there um, and it's changed, please correct me because I want to be correct. Once again, the whole both sides thing. Um, who were these Gnostics? In a nutshell, Gnostics were people who believed that every Christian was a Christ and thus every Christian was divine. Jesus was thus Christ and divine only in this sense, not in any unique sense. Brown contends that these Gnostic original disciples came before the man we associate as Jesus. Disciples, Peter, James, John, and the rest. In order for Brown's theory to work, Peter and the rest of the New Testament disciples must have twisted the writings of the allegedly original Gnostic disciples. Their so-called human message is supposedly contained in one of these Gnostic texts called the Gospel of Thomas, as well as the hypothetical document no one has ever seen called Q. Both these, te these are claimed to predate the Gospels of the New Testament. In neither of these documents is there any teaching on the death, physical resurrection, and divine nature of Jesus. So Jesus is interpreted to be a human, concerned only with justice in this world. It go, you know, they talk about the, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, another uh, text that the Da Vinci Code talks about. For example, the book of Mary Magdalene, we'll go on to that, was written long after the death of Christ and long after any of the disciples or people who directly knew Jesus Christ died. That's one reason it was omitted. The second reason is that it was written by a man, not Mary Magdalene. Um, the book claims to be written by Mary Magdalene, but there's proof throughout other texts that it was not. Um, so those are the two main reasons it was omitted from the Bible. The, the reasoning behind omitting texts um, was not this conspiracy or anything like that. There was a very, very rigid set of rules that they had in place in order to accept any gospel. Um, they had to be an eyewitness account or somebody who knew one of the apostles. And these texts did not meet those those requirements. They were written long after or you know had no relation to any of the apostles, disciples, etc. We could get much deeper into this. This this could be like a half an hour video. This could be like a three-day video, to be completely honest. Um, so I really, I mean, once again, if if you're into this type of stuff, go get it. Um, if you're not, I wouldn't bother. Danielle, I know you're Gnostic um, because you said so on your channel, and I just talked to you in chat. You and me, we're going to discuss this thing, okay? You and I, we're going to have a discussion about this. Um, we're going to go back and forth for a little while until we totally kill the subject and people say, stop talking about it. Um, but I'm not going to let people say stop talking about it yet because they haven't heard your side and they don't know how good the discussion is going to get. And I really have a feeling that the discussion is going to get really good because I like talking about this stuff. And talking to you and watching your videos, you seem very open and willing to talk about this stuff. Um, and any other fools that want to, by fools I mean the people on this channel. I, I, I've, I've dubbed everyone here a fool because we're literate fools and everything like that. Anyway, you guys feel free to chime in too. Um, looking forward to hearing from you guys and I will talk to you guys next Monday. Or go to literatefools.com and go into the forum and we can discuss more there.